Hey, hello guys, this is Kathik from ExecuteAutomation.com and this is part 30 of our Coded UI video series. And in this part, we're going to talk about diagnostics. Visual Studio Debug during playback. In Coded UI testing, we can set diagnostic information for our code and we can get more information about the underlying code execution. And this we can do using a lot of ways, but the easiest way is the draw highlight method. So this draw highlight method will actually create a blue rectangle box. It's not red color box, but it's a blue rectangle box in the control if you try to execute that. And we can see that if we just flip to Visual Studio. So this is a small code which I have recorded for this particular calculator application, right? And if I want to see which control it is performing the operation during the execution, what you can do is you can just set the draw highlight method for that particular method. So let's say I want to set a draw highlight for this particular BTN6. So I can do like this dot draw highlight, right? So this method will actually create a highlighting of that particular control using that blue color box. And this is helpful while you try to execute and see which control it's actually performing the operation. So let me quickly run this code and show you how it looks like. So as you can see, it is highlighting the six button in a blue color rectangle box. And then it's performing the rest of operation. So it's pretty same, right? It's pretty straightforward as well. And this is helpful especially while you try to perform an operation in a particular control and see if that works or not. So this is a visual debugging during a playback. So the problem with the draw hit method is it takes seven seconds to complete its action, which incurs a slow performance or a period of time in your code execution, and hence considered as one of the bad practice in coding, right? So if you try to highlight the particular button, it just takes you seven seconds to perform the same operation. And it is not that you're gonna view that particular operation to happen every time visually in a particular code. So instead of the draw highlight method to show you the highlighted box, you can rather use something called as diagnostics. So there are different ways to set diagnostic information and get diagnostic information from your test execution. So instead of the draw highlight method, we're going to set the diagnostic levels. And this can be done by modifying these two config files. So it depends upon which version of .NET you're going to execute. If you have .NET version 3.0 and 3.5 or something like that, you can modify this qtagent32.exe.config file. Or if you have framework 4.0 and above, then you can modify that in the qtagent32-40.exe.config file. So you can set the diagnostic level in these config files. Or you can add the same information of the Qt agent into your project specific app config file. So app config file you can create into your project and you can get the diagnostic information which is available in the Qt32 underscore 40.exe.config file. You can copy those codes and paste into your app.config file and make that available only for your project so that you don't disturb other projects as well. Right? Or the last option is to override the playback setting by adding a below line of code. So you can set the playback dot playback settings dot log override state is equal to HTML log state dot all action snapshot. So if you set this particular property of playback setting, then this diagnostic level can be performed. So let's not waste our time and flip to Visual Studio and see what kind of coding we need to write in these particular config files. So I'm going to flip to Visual Studio. So here I'm going to actually create a app.config file into my project so that I don't disturb the existing project which is running into my machine. So I'm just going to create a app.config file. So for that I'm going to hit add and new item. So here you can search for something called application configurations. And you can see there is an app config file, right? You can just add that into your project. And then what else do we need to add into this configuration files? And that's the important stuff. So for that, I'm going to navigate to my Qt agent 32 underscore 40 dot exe dot config. 
So this is available in my program file, Microsoft Visual Studio 14.0, since I'm using Microsoft Visual Studio 2015 edition. And go to Common 7 IDE. And here in this particular folder, you actually have this Qt agent. 32 underscore 40 dot exe and this is an XML configuration file and you can see that right it's not an exe it's a config file so I'm just going to open this with sublime text right and here you can see this just scroll down and you can see there is something called system dot diagnostic and this is the actual node which we are interested in so I'm just going to copy this guys everything until this app setting I'm just going to copy this code and come back here and just paste this code like this right we need to change this EQT trace level so this is actually the one which is used for getting the information from your code if you say zero then the trace level is off and if you say one, then it will capture the trace information only if there is an error in your code. If it is two, then it is for a warning level along with the error level. And if you say three, it is along with the warning level and error level and the information. If you set four, it is for verbose. So I'm going to set the four level here. And we need to add some keys and values for this app setting to take a screenshot as well as to create a HTML file for our error. So for doing that, what I'm going to do is I have already written some code for doing that. So for that, let me show you what two lines that we need to add into our app.config file. So you can see that the only modification we need to do in the config file is to add the below two lines of code. It says add key of enable HTML logger and the value is equal to true and add keys of enable snapshot info and the value is set to true. So enable HTML logger and that's what we need to add. So I'm going to just add add of key is equal to enable HTML logger and the value is set to be true. And then I need to also add a key of enable snapshot info and the value is set to true right so that's it so these are the two lines of code changes and also this eqt trace level i'm just setting it to four that's it if you do this and just close this app.config file and now if you come back and if you try to run this code initially if you try to run this code you can see that there won't be any output or even if there is any output, there will be just a screenshot if there is any error, right? But right now, you can see that if there is no error, I hope there won't be any data to be captured. So as you can see, okay, we need to remove this draw edit method from the code. Else it wait for seven seconds. All right, and now you can see there is a new link called output. If you open this, you can see that it also collected some debug trace information. Also, there is an HTML file. So if I open this HTML file, you can see that it's creating a beautiful page for us. And it says that it clicked the calculator plus title bar. And it also shows the information like a rectangle square box. And it clicked the button five, clicked the button six, and every single information is pretty much captured here, right? And it's taking screenshot for each and every level. The reason is we have set to capture for all the information in the equity trace, right? If you just ask the code in the app.config file to capture only for the errors, then you can see that it will capture only for the errors. So instead of this, Maybe you can set this to one or something like that. And then if you try to run this, it will capture only for the errors. So I'm just going to leave it to four right now. And I'm going to show you if what if there is any errors. So I'm just going to delete this uh, draw highlight method. And here in the UI button plus button, I'm just going to modify its search properties. 
so you can see that its search property is actually sitting there so please go back and watch the videos on hand coding code divide testing which is discussed in our previous parts so that you can understand how we are modifying this code so instead of this plus i'm just going to add something called plus something like that and then i'm just going to run this test All right, seems like there is an error because the plus button is not there and it waits for 30 seconds and then it will throw an error. And now if you go to the output, you can see that it's actually showing an information that the plus button is not found, right? And it also shows the detailed information on the issues, right? So this is how you can verify the issues using this diagnostic information. And the last option, as I told, to set the playback information. For that, instead of adding this app.config file, what you can do, you can just delete this completely. And you can come back to this code.ui test1 method. And here, you can actually set the playback dot playback settings property. And you can set the logger override state to HTML logger state and set to any one of these properties. Whether you want to take the snapshot for all the actions snapshot or default trace level or disabled or error and warning only snapshot. So let's take the error and warning snapshot. So instead of taking the screenshot for each and every steps that you're gonna perform, and let's try to run this. And this time you can see that it will take the screenshot of only the failure step instead of taking for all the steps. All right, seems to be like there is some problem and it has stopped. And now let's go to the output and see what's happening in our HTML file. And this time you can see that there is no screenshot right here for any one of the steps, but it has taken the screenshot only for the failing step. And this is what we are expecting in our diagnostic information, right? So that's it guys. This is how you can get the diagnostic information from your test execution using code.ui testing. Thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.